in my mind, even though I was getting sicker, I was denying a lot of it because I didn't want to take away from somebody who needed it worse than me. Uh, little did I know that I was that person. And um, it took, you know, quite some time and the symptoms to come back and the, uh, the medicine on the IV to, to quit working and to give me those symptoms to realize that I needed to be in the hospital. There was, there was no way um, that I could continue functioning at home um, without some, some help. And quickly um, after Dr. Bogave came in the room and said, it's yours. And I remember asking her, um, am I still on the list? Like still a match or is it, is it my heart? And she said, you have this heart. It is yours. It is 100% your number one. Um, you know, you're getting hard today. And I remember Carter coming into the room, and I remember getting to see him and uh, tell him I love him. And um, my family, most everybody was, was coming in. You know, my brothers and my mom and dad and, and my husband Kevin were already there, but everybody else was starting to kind of trickle in to, to see me before surgery. Um, and I got to, to say hi to everybody and, and just know that they were there supporting me. starting the recovery process, knowing that I'm alive and my fingers and toes are warm. They hadn't been warm in a while. Um, and being able to breathe, I could lay down and breathe. And that was unbelievable. Um, couldn't automatically feel my heartbeat that I had felt for months and months and months. Uh, that was a good feeling to not feel your heartbeat, which sounds absolutely crazy, but it was a wonderful feeling to not sit there and count your heartbeats and wonder, um, am I going to feel VTAC? You know, have that fear um, and just know that it was success. At that moment, you know, several hours later, the surgery was a success. Of course, the staff up there is amazing and they work specifically with, um, you know, transplant patients and um, LVAD patients and pump patients and you get to meet so many people in your same situation. And that was uh, extremely inspiring to see other patients going through what you're going through at the same time and getting to know them. Um, and then you get to the point where you're doing so well um, that you get to be discharged and you get to ring the bell again. It's the next step. Um, and I remember walking out of floor 12 and getting to elevators and ringing the bell and having all of the staff there applauding so supportive and so excited and rewarded that um, you get to go home. Floor and you're being cared for by the ICU nurses and they truly become family. Um, my room was a little special. I was a little spoiled by all of my friends and family that um, my room was decorated and there was always goodies for nurses and things like that. But. Um, to truly see the love and the support of these nurses who are caring for you um, is unbelievable. And they are people who have touched my life and will be part of my life forever. As a young lady who doesn't expect heart problems in your 20s, um, they were not genetic. They were not something I was prepared and, and knew was coming, um, you know, as a child growing into an adult. And it was a very um, quick um, problem that occurred. It was something that a virus, a random virus, you know, attacked that heart muscle and, and weakened my heart enough to where I eventually needed a heart transplant. I would say, listen to your body. As a woman, we are so specific and so in tune to so many things but we try to deny what we're feeling sometimes to, to hide because you're supposed to be the strong one. You're supposed to be the, you know, the one to keep everybody organized and keep everybody situated. And, and I would just say, listen to your body, listen to your symptoms. Um, you know, even, even though I wasn't an athlete and, and being a, at least an active person, um, 
This isn't something I foresaw or could have prevented. This is something that naturally occurred in my body and something that you need to recognize and uh, seek help because you can be the healthiest person in the whole entire world. You can eat um, zero fried foods and, and low sodium diet all your life just thinking I might have this and it could still happen to you. Um, so, so make sure that um, you are aware of, of what's out there and educated on heart disease. It's the number one um, killer of, of women and people don't um, get checks on their hearts all the time like they do for cancers and um, colonoscopies and things like that. So it's never too early um, and it's uh, never too late as well. It's something to be um, grateful for and um, excited that, you know, hopefully this is the right track to where you should never see an issue and uh, go on and live your life without um, the fear of having that heart failure anymore. You have a new life. You've been given a new life by an amazing family and an amazing person who decided that it was important um, to be a donor and to give somebody the gift of life.